بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجا from the sacred grounds of Masjid al Kuf this incredible monument to the unicity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala traditions tell us that it is after Masjid al Haram the oldest masjid in all of human history. It is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed angels to prostrate before Adam. It is the prayer ground of celestial beings. It is where prophets Adam first prayed to God and where Nuh came and Ibrahim came it's a place that has so much history. Amir al Mu'mineen obviously prayed here. But I think what's incredible about this place isn't so much its history, but its future. It's the fact that traditions tell us that this is where the Imam, the final vicegerent, God's promised Savior, Al Hujjat ibn al Hassan, Al Mahdi Ajjalallah wa Ta'ala Faraja al Sharif, will lead the world from. Some traditions even say, Sayakunu As'adu al Nasi bihi Ahlu al Kuf. Those who are luckiest are the ones who live in the vicinity of this city, the holy city of Najaf and Kufa, which is now part of Najaf. And so the future of this masjid is so incredibly exciting that it really makes you think about the fact that our belief in the Savior, our belief in the awaited Imam who will cleanse the earth from injustice and oppression and fill it to the very brim with justice and equity and prosperity. Our belief in that isn't some abstract theoretical notion. It's not just something that we believe in that lacks any nuance and detail. Rather, it is linked to physical space. It's something that we have very minute details about. For instance, the fact that he will be standing somewhere in this courtyard when he first announces his divine mandate. The hadith says, and it's attributed to Amir al-Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salawatullah, the hadith says, The awaited Savior, the one who will rise. It's as if I can see him when he is standing in this mosque. And he is surrounded, encircled by 313 of his most loyal lieutenants the companions of the Imam. The Imam then describes them as Ashabul Alwiyah, the standard bearers, the flag bearers of the Mahdi, who will rule the earth on behalf of God Almighty. Such a beautiful description, it sends shivers down my spine. The Imam describes how the Imam is surrounded by these 313 loyal individuals who will be his governors, they will be his ambassadors, they will be the ones to lead humanity into prosperity and away from the darkness that has befallen it for centuries and eons. And then he says that he will bring out a scroll which has the seal and the signature of God's final prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And in it, he will have his mandate. 
Isn't it incredible, my dear brothers and sisters, that we have these prophecies, prophecies that include so much nuance, detail, rich detail, that inspire hope, they inspire longing and yearning for a brighter, better future for humanity. And on that note, I want to say a few things, if I may. Number one, you should have hope that no matter what difficulty you're going through, no matter the hardship, no matter how severe your trial, that you should have hope because the world could use some hope. We could all use some hope. And there is no better source of hope and inspiration than our belief in the Mahdi. Because the Mahdi represents the pinnacle of God's mercy being applied in this world. God's love and benevolence being expressed as much as physical reality can withstand. And so having hope in not just the world finally prospering and finding peace and spirituality, but I think more importantly, hope that we will get to see the, represent, the representative and the culmination and the embodiment and the epitome of God's most perfect creations. Imagine if you were told that you'd, you'd get to meet Prophet Adam or Prophet Nuh or Ibrahim or Musa or Isa or our own Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Well, the Mahdi represents all of them. The Mahdi represents the personification of every single one of God's apostles and prophets and messengers. So just that idea that we'll get to meet someone of that caliber, someone like that, actually set our eyes on his luminous, beautiful face. It, again, it's just so incredibly beautiful just to think of that moment. Could it be that we would also be here when the Mahdi reappears, when he stands somewhere in the corners of this masjid and cries out, Ana al hujjatul qa'im. Is it possible that we get to see that day? Ya Allah, one could only pray. We could only hope. We could only yearn and long for that. It's possible. In fact, our yearning for that is instrumental in making it happen. Our longing for the day the Imam reappears, we've been told we have specific instructions that the more you pray, the more you yearn, the more likely it is and the sooner it'll happen. So, يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا They think it's far. The doubters, the imposters, the liars, the disbelievers. They think it's too far. But we see it. We see it happening sooner rather than later. Inshallah.